Hi there, and thank you for purchasing my Simple Time of Day Blueprint System. In this video, I will show you how to set it up and use all the included examples. At the end, I will show you how to create your own custom logic with it. Let's start from a basic new level. Now, first thing you need to do is add the main time of day BP to your level. Now, you only need one of these in your level, and everything we create will connect to it. Next, on the details panel, enter in the number of real life seconds you want for one of your game days. There are also a number of other options as well, but for now, let's keep everything at default. Now, let's start adding in and setting up the examples. First, we will work with the sky rotator. Go ahead and drop one in your level, and then over on the details panel, select our time of day BP. And now we just need to attach our directional lights to it. We'll go ahead and select the first one as our sun. Now let's create the directional light for the moon. Let's just duplicate this one and tweak some of the settings. Let's rotate the directional light for the sun so we can get a better idea of what we're doing with the moonlight. Okay, that's better, but something's wrong with our sky. This is happening because our directional light is not set up properly with our sky atmosphere. And to fix it, we just need to adjust the atmosphere index to 1, since by default the sun is already slotted in index 0. Be much better. Next, we need to get our moon to show up in the sky. And the reason you cannot see it right now is because of the sky sphere. And if we hide it, we can see our moon in the sky just fine. So at this point, if you don't need the sky sphere, you can just go ahead and delete it. But if for some reason you still want to keep it, I'll show you how to fix the default one. Navigate on over to the material for the sky sphere and open it up. And right here is the problem. This material only supports one sky disk. See the index zero here? This is the slot our sun is in. Now we need to modify this material to also support our moon. And to do so, you just need to duplicate these fields. Then add them together and connect it to your emissive color. Then go ahead and select this field and enter one as our value. And this reference is the one that we set on our atmosphere index for your moonlight. Go ahead and save your material as something new. Then attach this new material to your sky sphere. Now if we turn the visibility of our sky sphere back on, we should still see our moon. And there it is. Now just go back to the BP time of day sky and set your moon. And when you hit play, you should see the moon directly above, exactly where it should be for midnight. And right about now, you might be saying to yourself, But Dino, why is the sky still bright? Well, Timmy, that's because of the default auto exposure settings, and we can fix that pretty easily with the post process volume. So go ahead and drop one in your level and check off unbound. This will make it work anywhere in the level. Then we just need to clamp our minimum and maximum brightness under exposure to one. Yep, that's what we're looking for. Now, if we ramp the speed up to 10x and look at the moon, we can see it ticking across the sky. And that doesn't look very good. And this is because our notify rate is set to 1 second right now. So let's go ahead and set this to 0.1 and see what happens. As you can see, it's much smoother now. You really shouldn't have to go much lower than this unless you're trying to do some kind of precision with real time. By default, the system will automatically position your sun and moon at the proper starting locations, with your moon directly overhead at midnight and your sun directly overhead at noon. Because of this, we can set our moon and sun positions anywhere we need to while working in the editor, and when we press play, they'll automatically align for us. If for some reason you want to manually position where the sun and the moon are at noon and midnight on your level, you'll need to set those positions as your default starting positions in the editor. Then just uncheck this auto align sky at start. So now when we press play, we can see our sun at midnight is over here, which is not very realistic, but you might have this need somewhere in one of your levels. For now, let's just enable the setting and let the code handle it for us. And that covers setting up the sky rotator. Go ahead and move on to the next part. Navigate to the Blueprints folder and drop the BP time of day sounds into your level. Then on the details panel, go ahead and select our BP time of day. 
Now let's set the times we want our sounds to activate at. For daytime, I'm having them start at 5.55 a.m. And for the nighttime sounds, we'll set them to start at 5.45 p.m. Now we just need to attach our ambient sound sources. And since we don't have any, we'll need to add some. Go ahead and place one from the Place Actors window. Now select the sound you want to use for your daytime. I'm going to use a seagull sound I found on YouTube. Next, duplicate the ambient sound. And now select your nighttime sound. I'm going to use this cricket sound. Unfortunately, I don't have permission to distribute these sounds, so you're going to have to find your own. Now, if you press play right now, you hear both of them go off at once, which is not what we want. Now we just need to bind our ambient sounds to the Time of Day Sounds BP details panel. You can have more sounds to each slide if you need. And now when we press play, you'll still hear both, but you'll notice that the seagulls will fade out right away. And to fix this, we just need to disable the auto activate on both of our ambient sounds. Our code will handle the activation for us instead. Now when we press play, we get the expected behavior. I'll go ahead and ramp up the speed and jump ahead so you can hear the transition at daytime. There you have it. That's all it takes to set up the ambient sound BP. Let's take a look at the analog clock next, but first we need somewhere to place it. So I'm going to create a little wall for us to work off of real quick. Okay, that looks good. Now let's drop the analog clock on the road and position it on our wall. Select the clock and on the details panel, yep, you guessed it, select our time of day BP. Let's go ahead and tweak the scaling to make it a little bit bigger. I'm also going to change the hour hand to pink and the minute hand to gold. Here's what our analog clock looks like now. The hard tick hour hand option can be used if you want to force the hour hand to stay still until it just rolls over to the next hour. Then it'll snap to that hour's position. By default, this option is off, and with it off, the hour hand will slowly progress smoothly to the next hour. This last option is for the speed of the clock, and that is because this analog clock actually works off an on-demand fashion instead of using the event dispatcher. Sometimes you may want to have control from the object instead of depending on the event dispatcher, and that's what this example is demonstrating. You can take a look and see how it works by opening up the blueprint. Now let's flip around to the other side and take a look at the digital clock. Go ahead and drop one in your level and position it on the wall. Then select the time of day BP on the details panel. I'm going to also change the text color to a sky blue. There's also an option to show the AM and PM on the 12 hour. You also have an option to toggle 12 hour and with it off it will show a 24 hour format. And this last setting is for the font size of the text. And this is important if you enable AM and PM. You'll want to shrink the font size just to make sure that everything fits on the clock base. And that is all it takes to set up the clocks. Now let's take a look at the light switch. I'm going to create us a quick roof so we can get a better view of these lights. There we go. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and set up our lights. Drag out a few point lights or spotlights from the place actors window. Place them in your level. I'm going to set these two to orange and they will be my evening lights. And this third one to blue for my daytime light. Let's see how that looks real quick. I like it. Now let's drop a BP time of day light switch into our level and set up when we want our lights to turn on. I'm going to go with 5.45 a.m. to turn on the daylights and 5.45 p.m. to turn on the nightlight. And whenever one set activates, it will automatically disable the other set. 
Then we just need to link our lights to the blueprint through the details panel like this. Oh, and don't forget to select your time of day, BP. As long as you have it in the world, it will still work, but by selecting it, we are being a little bit more efficient by not searching through the world for it. Let's see how it looks. Let's move on to the actor spawner now. Go ahead and place the BP time of day simple spawner into your world and use the widget to help you position it. Next from the details panel, go ahead and select the time of day BP and then add a spawner. Then pick your spawn at time and select the actor you want to spawn. I'm going to go with 1 a.m. and I'm going to select the little silver ball from the examples folder. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now let's kick it up a notch. Let's add another actor to the spawner. This time let's select our Firefly Niagara BP sample. And let's see how that looks. Looks good. Now let's adjust the start time to something earlier in the evening instead. And we also set up the despawner to clean it up at 3 a.m. the next morning. Yeah, you can do a lot more. This was just one spawner. If we want to do something else the same location but at a different time, we can just add another spawner to this one. Or if we need to spawn something else in a different location, just create another spawner BP. I'll go ahead and speed things up and I'll add in a few more things. I went ahead and I added a color flies Niagara and I also created another spawner to spawn the pink orb and three green cubes. And there you have it, that's a simple spawner. Now this last section will show you how to tap into the time of day BP to create your own time based logic. And for this example, we'll keep it simple and we'll just print the current timestamp out to the screen. So go ahead and create a new blueprint in the folder and call it BP My Time Event. Next, open it up and go to the event graph. The first thing we want to do is set up our variable for the blueprint. So go ahead and create a variable and for this type, search for our BP time of day. And select the first one. Also set it instance editable. Now go ahead and place your blueprint in the world and select your time of day BP. Then return to the event graph and drag out your time of day BP variable. Convert it to a validated get. Then drag off the time of day BP handle and select bind event to notify time. Drag off the event handle and select add custom event and give your event a name. Now drag off the notify data handle and select break st underscore notify data. Pull off the time handle and select break st notify data time. And finally, pull off the timestamp 12 with am pm and select print text. Connect the execution pins and tidy up the blueprint. Go ahead and compile and save. 
and return to your viewport and press play. You should see our print text flooding the screen at the top left. The reason it's happening so much is because our event notifies every 0.1 seconds. Now we can add a throttle on our end to limit how often we interact with this data in a few different ways. And the first one I'm going to show you uses just the do once node. And after we're done printing the text, we'll take a delay for one second before resetting the do once node. Now watch what happens when we press play. Every one second, the timestamp appears. Now let's say you only want this to print out once at exactly 1 a.m. each day. Here's a simple way to do that. First, make some room between your event and the do once. And disconnect the timestamp pin for now. Then from the time structure, activate that 24 hour pin and pull off of it and select equal. Enter one in the box. And connect it to the branch. Then lead the execute pin from the true right into the do once. Hook back up the timestamp pin to the print text. And remove the delay. Also remove the reroute pins. And just run the false execution pin from our branch right into the reset pin on the do once. Now hit play and watch as the timestamp of 1 a.m. gets printed exactly at 1 a.m. and only once. And that's pretty much how you add custom logic. I'm going to go ahead and delete this custom logic example, but I'll save the level so you have something else to reference. And you can find that in the maps folder. And the last piece that we did not talk about is the UI, and that is included. And you can see exactly how that works just by looking at the blueprint for it. It's pretty similar to the rest of them. And the player controllers in the demo folder, that's how it's being added to the UI. And I hope this system helps you accomplish your goals. Thanks again for your purchase, and be sure to check out my channel and website, dynomega.com, to see my other creations. If you have any questions about this blueprint system, feel free to ask in the comments this video or contact me directly. There you have it. I like it.